In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at pulleys, one of the classic six simple machines. We'll take some measurements demonstrating how they work, and then we'll try building a scale model of an electricity-free elevator. A pulley is one of what Renaissance scientists referred to as the six basic machines, six mechanical devices that helped you change the direction or magnitude of a force. The other five are a lever, a wheel and axle, an inclined plane, a wedge, and a screw. Today we'll be looking at pulleys and taking some measurements with this fish scale to see what happens to the different weights on a rope as it runs through one or more pulleys. After that, the plan is to build a scale model of something I came up with a few years ago, and maybe other people have come up with it hundreds of times before me, but the idea is to make an elevator that uses just weights, ropes, and pulleys, and no electricity. Here's the idea. A fixed weight will have two separate pulley systems attached to it, one that makes it so you could ride the other end of the rope up, and one that makes it so you could ride it back down. First off, we need a frame that we can attach stuff to, so I've got a bunch of scrap wood, and we're gonna start throwing some stuff together. This is not the most official looking construction ever. Some pieces are kind of twisted and warped and it's just not flat. That's because this is literally just thrown together from pieces that I already had just in my scrap pile. But it should work pretty well. The important thing is that this end over here can take a good amount of weight and we can do our tests on this. Here's the first pulley we're gonna do some tests with. It's designed to just be permanently attached onto something. It doesn't move around like some other kinds of pulleys. It just stays in one spot, but that's exactly what we want at first. We've got our pulley attached and we've got a thin cord running through the pulley. We're now gonna attach that onto this little clip. That's just to make things a little bit easier as we're disconnecting and reconnecting stuff. We have here a fishing scale. We've got here what is supposed to be a 10 pound weight. This is just sort of a, a barbell exercise weight. We're gonna just hook that on with this little rope and see what measurement our scale gives us. 10.17 pounds. For those who are curious, that is 4.6 kilos. So we can see. Just over 10 pounds, it could be that the weight has a little bit of extra on it. It could be that this fish scale is not 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. It's supposed to be 10 pounds. It's showing up as almost 10 pounds. Now let's see what happens if we connect this to our pulley system and then use our scale to pull on that. All right, let's add a little bit of a loop into our rope right here so that we can hook our scale onto it. Pull on the loop, weight goes up. All right, turn our scale on. The scale is going to be upside down, but we should still be able to see the numbers. So it was 10.17 pounds. 10.17, we got exactly the same readout. A single fixed pulley does change the direction of the force, but it doesn't change the magnitude of the force. I've now got a 7.5 pound weight with a hook attached to it, and we're gonna put that through the loop instead of our scale. And what we're gonna see is that it's not heavy enough to pull the 10 pound weight. Of course it's not. 10 pounds is more than seven and a half pounds. Drop it the other way, we can see that the 10 pound weight is of course enough to lift the lighter weight. With our seven and a half pound weight attached to one end, if we now attach the fish scale to the same spot, it's not gonna take as much pull because it's already got the weight. Same deal, we've got static friction coefficient to overcome, but we can see that what we're getting on the scale varies between about one and a half pounds and well, I think we got up to six there, but an equilibrium does seem to be at about two and a half pounds, which is exactly what we'd expect to see. Let's change things up and try attaching a single movable pulley to our weight instead of one fixed pulley above. We've got our 10 pound weight. We have a pulley attached to the top of the weight. On one end, our cord is just attached to the beam. It's not running through this pulley. It's just on the beam, separate from that. And the other side, we can just pull with our hands. So how hard are we gonna have to pull on this rope in order to get that weight to lift off the ground? Well, let's look at it if it's just suspended in the air. We know we have 10 pounds of weight hanging down and we've got two cords. That means each cord should have five pounds on it. And that's not really gonna change even if we're pulling it up and down. We should still have 
five pounds are suspended in this cord and five pounds suspended in this cord. Here we go, here's our scale. Pull till the weight starts lifting and we are at about five pounds. If we pull really fast for a second, it might register as even higher, but for the most part, we get approximately five pounds of force necessary to lift this 10 pound weight. Now with our single movable pulley system, it cuts the weight down in half, but of course there has to be a trade-off. You can see that if I move my hand, I'm grabbing the rope right at the pulley. If I lift it from here all the way up to this beam, the weight didn't move the whole distance to the beam. The weight moved half of the distance to the beam. So it only takes half as much force to lift this weight off the ground, but it only moves half as far. There has to be a trade-off, and you can't remove the amount of work it takes to get that weight up to its final height. And see, to raise it all the way up, my hand has to travel twice the height of the weight. But now we have an issue back to where we first started before we'd even come up with the pulley in the first place, is that we're lifting up. Sure, it's easier to lift up than it was before, but we're still pulling up, which is not as easy of a motion as pulling down. So we can run it through the fixed pulley again. And now we can pull down and lift the weight up. The fixed pulley doesn't change the magnitude, but it does change the direction. So this takes five pounds pulling up. That means this takes five pounds pulling down. And of course, if we move the entire distance from the top pulley to the bottom pulley, our weight moves approximately half that distance. We have to go back and pull it a second time to get it all the way up. I've got a couple more pulleys, so I'm gonna add another one to the top, another one to our weight, and see if we can reduce how much we have to pull on this even more. All right, the cord starts fixed on one end of the beam. It's going down through the first pulley, up through the fixed pulley on the top. Now we're gonna come back down through the second movable pulley on the weight and then we're gonna go back up to this newly fixed pulley. It's feeling pretty lightweight to me. Let's check how much it takes to move this with two moving pulleys and two fixed pulleys. It's showing up as anywhere between one and a quarter pounds and almost four and a half to overcome friction. But what we should be looking at is one quarter of the total weight. That would be two and a half pounds. Previously, we attached our seven and a half pound weight to a single fixed pulley system, and of course, the 10 pound weight lifted it right up. But now we've got a system of moving pulleys, and we should see the opposite effect. Quite a bit, in fact. There is very little resistance there. The seven and a half pound weight just plummets to the ground, lifting the 10 pound weight one quarter of the distance to the pulleys at the top. Several years ago, while I was just doing some doodles, drawings, messing around with how pulley systems work, I thought of this idea that you might be able to use pulleys and weights to build a sort of elevator. The concept I thought was pretty fun, and so what I want to do is build a scale model. And it's not just one weight that would lift you back up, it's a weight that has two separate systems attached to it. One where the weight is attached to a single fixed pulley, so the weight would pull you up, and another system run at the same time that has a movable pulley and a fixed pulley, so your weight would overcome the counterweight and you could ride it back down. We have our system all set up. We've got a 10 pound weight with two separate pulley systems attached to it. The black one is a single fixed pulley, so it's not changing the magnitude. It's still an even 10 pound pull, but it is changing the direction. The weight goes down, it pulls the rope up. The movable pulley changes our magnitude, dividing it in half, and the fixed pulley changes the direction so that it's still the opposite direction as the movement of the weight. So imagining that this whole thing is a scaled down treehouse, this weight represents the weight, this seven pound weight represents the person, or you know, we'll say me, and this represents the little ledge in the treehouse or the treehouse itself. This is actually non-functional, it's just there to prove a point. The black cord, which is on the fixed pulley, and that is currently tied to something on the ground. And this little loop is where our person can grab a hold. Now as we untie the rope from where it's wrapped around this screw, the heavier weight takes over, lifting this weight, well, almost all the way up to this platform. Like I said, this is just illustrative. We can just say that they can climb on from there. Yay! We have climbed up onto our platform, just as we wanted. But now you need to get down and the weight is all the way down there. So what you do, is you clip into the other system 
and climb out of the treehouse. You are now gently lowered down to the ground by the pulley system and the weights. Of course, the weight is now only halfway there and the loop to get back up is way out of reach. So what you need to do is just keep pulling on the orange cord, to lift your weight all the way back to the top until you can reach the loop for the other side again. This is actually one setup where you would be glad that the pulleys aren't 100% frictionless. If they were perfect pulleys, then as you jumped out of the treehouse, you would actually still drop at the full speed of gravity. You would hit the ground holding a rope that took a whole bunch of your weight off, so it wouldn't be like hitting the ground full speed normally jumping out of the treehouse. Your legs wouldn't be supporting your whole weight, but it'd still probably be pretty scary to be rushing in at the ground that quickly. Overall, the idea does work pretty well, and I hope that I get a chance in the future to try this out as a full-scale treehouse elevator. Guys, thanks for watching, and we've got more for you to see. The box up at the top will take you to our last video, and you should go check that out. The bottom box will show you what YouTube thinks you need to be watching next, and if you hit this bomb in the middle, you'll be subscribed to our channel so you never miss out on a video. Don't forget to ring that bell, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.